people knew him won't forget him. In Buffalo, Jeff Rusak, 7 Eyewitness News. Laner is the 51st Buffalo police officer to die in the line of duty. The first since Officer Patricia Peretti. In 2006, she was shot by a gunman at a convenience store, paralyzing her from the neck down. She died from her injuries years later in 2013. Within minutes of Buffalo police tweeting out that Officer Laner's body had been recovered, they were flooded with support from all over. Among those sending support, the Sheriff of New Kent County in Virginia, the New York State Association of Chiefs and paramedics in Southern Ontario. Niagara County Sheriff Jim Vatour tweeted, our honor to assist, may God bless your brother. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office also extending condolences. And the Erie County Sheriff's Office writing, our brother will live on forever in our memories. Now 7 Eyewitness News first brought you word that police had found Officer Laner's body online, bringing you live coverage of the procession through the streets and the police press conference and the emotion that followed. You can watch all those moments again on our Facebook page as we learn more about funeral and burial plans for Officer Laner. We'll be sure to let you know on air and online. Now, a 7 Eyewitness News I-Team exclusive. Police arrest an alleged sexual predator at an Orchard Park senior housing complex. This is him, 75-year-old Robert Bikewitz. 7 Eyewitness News I-Team lead investigator Charlie Specht has more now on the chilling allegations against him. I'm a man, I can't a woman. The allegations are shocking. A maintenance man at an Orchard Park senior housing complex accused of letting himself into the rooms of older women so he could sexually abuse them. 7 Eyewitness News has learned exclusively that this man, 75-year-old Robert Bikowitz, now faces three felony charges and one misdemeanor of sexually abusing vulnerable women at Angle Park Apartments in West Seneca. Bikowitz pleaded not guilty and was arraigned in Orchard Park Tuesday night accused of abusing at least two women and leaving family members like this one fearing for her loved one's safety. This relative agreed to share her story on the condition that she'd not be identified. The whole atmosphere in the facility has changed from peace and quiet to fear and anxiety that these women now fear for their own safety and their apartments. A manager at Angle Park Apartments called police after residents came forward and police say more victims may be out there. Meanwhile, a locksmith was seen at the apartments today. As for Bikowitz, he's free on $15,000 bail, and a judge has ordered him to stay away from the two women who have come forward. Now, through his attorney, Bikowitz declined comment for this report, but anyone with more information is asked to call Orchard Park Detectives. This number here at your screen, 662-6475. Charlie, how many people's rooms is he accused of going into? Two that police know about and have charged him with, but my sources are telling me could be one or two more that they know about. Okay, Charlie Specht, thank you very much. Also tonight, a big visit to Western New York today by the number two person in the Trump administration. Vice President Mike Pence here. You can see the Pence arriving at the Buffalo Airport today. And the goal of this visit really twofold. Ta a tax plan, the White House says, will put more money in the pockets of America's middle class and put more money in Congressman Chris Collins' war chest. Collins greeted Pence at the airport. And from there, they made their way to Salvatore's for a fundraiser luncheon. Greeting them across the street from the restaurant, though, a crowd of demonstrators that railed against both men, calling Collins out of touch with his district and jeering Pence's policies. Following the fundraiser, the vice president headed to Performance Advantage Company in Lancaster for a round table with a handful of local business owners and optimistic words there to share. Help is on the way. <laughs> Okay? We're going to roll our sleeves up. We're going to work with this congressman, mm -hmm. with all the members of the House and Senate, and we are going to pass the largest tax cut in American history, and we're going to pass it this year. Critical of that plan, U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer, he calls it a dagger in the heart of the middle class, and Governor Andrew Cuomo calls it an attack on New York. Next on 7 Eyewitness News at 11, the Buffalo Bills take their talents off the gridiron. We want to be more active in the community, and this is a start. What inspired them to show up at multiple events around Buffalo tonight? Plus, how two simple words are changing the conversation about sexual assault and harassment. You're looking at an antique, not me, this. It was built in 1890, and it still does exactly what it was built to do over 100 years ago. Make apple cider. I'm Mike Randall. We'll have that story coming up.
And get ready for a dramatic warm up followed by a major cool down. I've got all the details in my exclusive 7 First Alert 10 day outlook. And as we go to break, here's a live look at the Buffalo City Hall Dome. Once again, lit up in blue in memory of fallen officer Craig Laner, a nine year veteran of the force and veteran of the Army National Guard. We're here at 7 Eyewitness News extend our condolences to Officer Laner's relatives and brothers and sisters on the force and commend all of those who came from near and far to make sure he came home. We'll be right back. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News with Jeff Russo and Ashley Rowe, 7 First Alert Meteorologist Aaron Minkowski, and Sports Director Joe Biscaglia. Me Too. Two simple words sparking millions of women to share their experience with sexual harassment and abuse online. Since actress Alyssa Milano ignited the movement on Twitter, more than 12 million people have posted on Facebook or tweeted using the words me too. And once five women, 10 women, 20 women tell their stories about what's happened to them, it makes other women feel more courage to be able to say this happened to me too. Sparking all of this, the sexual abuse allegations against media mogul Harvey Weinstein. Milano says she hopes this leads to a change in the culture that has nurtured the kind of behavior that now has millions speaking out. A crucial meeting today between NFL players and owners, both sides sitting down for about three and a half hours to discuss the protests during the national anthem. We, uh, it reflected, I think, our commitment uh, to work together with our players on issues of social justice. But obviously, these are issues that are important to the players. Now, this is all in an effort to try and come up with a solution that would allow players to continue protesting racial inequality and injustice without dividing and alienating fans and potentially sponsors. The NFL and the players called the meeting positive and productive, but they say resolving this issue remains 
a work in progress. Now, Terry Pagula was one of the 11 owners present for the meeting, along with former Buffalo Bill wide receiver Anquan Bolden, who retired after a short stint with the team this summer, saying he felt fighting for human rights was a greater priority. And as that meeting unfolded, Pagula's players and Bolden's former teammates appeared at multiple community events around Buffalo. And 7 Eyewitness News reporter Jeff Slauson tells us it's their own way of pushing for positive change. For a lot of the kids at the Matt Urban Hope Center, crime is just a part of their lives. A lot of our youth, a lot of robberies, homicides, a lot of accidents happen in this area, and it stops a lot of people from coming here. A lot of people, but not the Buffalo Bills. A shock to the community. We couldn't believe that the Buffalo Bills would come in this area. Coming to hang out, sign some autographs, and play basketball. This was just one of five stops players made Tuesday for what they called Community Outreach Day. I've been in them same shoes. I've been in them same neighborhoods, them same playgrounds. You know, so I just want to be an example. I wouldn't trade this for anything else. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else on a Tuesday. After several Bills players took a knee during the national anthem last month, putting them front and center in the national political debate, they decided to channel all that attention for something good. And the best thing to do moving forward is just try to show love, positivity, um, and, and just and just show that you know we're all one and we're all together. The players know that these kids look up to them. It's a part of their job. Of course, we play a game for a living, but at the same time, we're role, we're role models. For the Bills, they say this is a small step in bridging the gap between the team and the community. So we support our Bills, and they, now it's like they're supporting us. You know, so that's a great feeling. Holding community events at these five locations was just the beginning, and according to running back LaShawn McCoy, he told me that hopefully he's going to get some of those kids down to Orchard Park, sitting in the seats at New Era Field to enjoy a game. In the studio, Jeff Slauson, 7 Eyewitness News. Hey, that is pretty neat. Really neat. Tuesday, always the off day for Buffalo Bills players during the season. A lot of times they get out of the community, but today, really broad, in a broad way they did. Oh, Important. yeah. And for these kids to be able to see the people who they see on TV every week, to get them into their own community center, that's a big deal. And some big names yeah, there as well. You bet. Now we go about 80 miles south of Buffalo, where there's a sweet operation carrying on a family tradition. And the 7 Eyewitness News is Mike Randall reports it's well worth the drive. Now here's a sweet spot in the southern tier. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can taste cider when I'm sleeping too. There's so much of it. So It all began when Andy's grandfather discovered an old cider press. Well, my grandfather found it in 1980, uh, saw it sticking up out of a barn and decided to bring it home and set it up. So Andy Schultz has been helping out with the cider biz for a couple of decades and recently took it over from his grandfather. I I've been working with my grandfather ever since I was probably 10 years old. The centerpiece for the mill is that antique press that dates back to 1890. Yeah, so it's over 100 years old and it still works, but there is a catch. It's very loud. No, I mean really loud. And he says it makes a lot of noise because it's old. Figures make a lot of noise as far as when they're running. That's okay, it may be old and may make a lot of noise, but it squeezes those apples like a pro. This cider gets a UV treatment. Yeah, it goes to a holding tank and then through our UV processor, which is an ultraviolet light. Versus pasteurization, we don't heat it up or change it at all as far as the flavor goes. The UV, UV treatment just kills any harmful bacteria that New York State requires you to do. The process is completed the old-fashioned way, one bottle at a time. The Bus Dye Cider Mill is open on weekends, and he plans to keep this tasty tradition started by his grandfather going for a long time to come. Hopefully for another 30 years at least. In the town of Bus Dye, Mike Randall, 7 Eyewitness News. Perfect time of year for cider. This morning, maybe some warm cider. It was chilly out there. What's the <laughs> forecast? Hold moving forward. Here's our guy, Aaron Mikowski. Yeah, it was a cool start to our day today. Temperatures were in the 30s this morning. This area of high pressure kind of stationed across the Ohio River Valley, and that is going to influence our weather through the upcoming weekend. Your high today hit 62, like we mentioned. It was cool this morning. We started the day off with a temperature of 35 degrees, and the sun comes up tomorrow morning at 731. Looking outside right now, we have clear skies, 54 degrees, winds down to uh, 13 miles per hour out of the southwest. You're going to find mainly clear skies tonight with a good deal of sunshine on Wednesday. 
Dry weather will persist through the upcoming weekend and temperatures get back into the 70s as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Right now we're at 54 in Buffalo, 55 in Dunkirk, mid 40s to low 50s across the southern tier, 61 right now in Niagara Falls, Lake Erie at 64 degrees, which ties the record for this date. So it's tied for the warmest the lakes ever been on this date, and that lake is five degrees above normal. Here's a look at your forecast overnight tonight and into your Wednesday. We're going to bottom out near 50 degrees here in Buffalo. We'll start off with a good deal of sunshine. Notice winds will kick up in the afternoon. Abundant sunshine with temperatures in the mid 60s. All in all, not a bad fall day tomorrow. Seven Super Doppler, nice and quiet across the area. We take a look at the hour by hour high resolution model. And there's really not much going on as far as the weather is concerned. Clear skies overnight, blue skies Wednesday afternoon, and watch the winds. They'll start to kick up throughout the day. So at the bus stop tomorrow, not a bad start to the day. Nice with the mostly sunny skies, temps in the mid 50s during the afternoon. Will be in the mid 60s, breezy and sunny with southwesterly winds around 15 miles per hour. It's going to be dry. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even into Sunday. So we're looking ahead to the upcoming weekend. Bills and the Buccaneers, nice start to the day. Temps in the upper 50s. Mild at kickoff near 70, low 70s by the fourth quarter. Some clouds will increase and a bit of a breeze expected in Orchard Park Sunday afternoon. Your forecast for tonight, mainly clear, not as cool. Your overnight low down to 51, 40s across the southern tier. On Wednesday, a high of 67, mostly sunny and milder with the winds increasing later in the day. Here's a look at your extended outlook, and you can see temps in the upper 60s through Friday. Low 70s on Saturday, mid 70s on Sunday. Monday, we start to drop. We're in the 60s. Tuesday, we're in the 50s. And look at Wednesday and Thursday. Highs in the 40s. And I had to look hard. Pull out the rain slash snow graphic. No. Yeah, you can see it uh, right there. A few wet flakes are a possibility if the models are correct over the higher hilltops next week. I love the forecast for the weekend. Looks fantastic for the game, but with Tampa coming, couldn't we have moved that wet snowflake to Sunday? <laughs> right. They'd be running the for the bus before they the be, game right? started. Yeah. Uh, we'll right. still win. We'll you still do, win. You do get Oakland that weekend, so it's not a total loss. Right, okay. right. Okay. Look at Joe. Oh, look at that. I got you. Always on Thanks. it, of course. <laughs> of course. Speaking of on it, what's the latest with the Sabres game? Yeah, the, the Sabres are in their final game of their first West Coast road trip of the regular season right now. With the game about halfway over, by the way, it's one to one. Matt Bovey joins me next to break down what the Blue and Gold have done thus far. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 11.
Now, with the Chevrolet Sports Desk, here's Sports Director Joe Biscaglia. Well, it'll be our last version of hashtag Sabres after dark for a while, but the Buffalo Sabres are out west taking on the Vegas Golden Knights, Golden Knights right now, I should say. Game about halfway through. Right now, the Sabres trailing the Golden Knights. Yeah. Two to one, just in. Matt Beauvais in to break down some of the action so far. Yeah, so Vegas literally just took the lead about two minutes ago, so they're yeah. leading 2-1. But you know what? At 6 o'clock, we talked about Ryan O'Reilly, how he needs to step up. Maybe he was watching because he did. He scored the Sabres' first goal of the night on the power play. It's so overused, but when you get pucks to the net, good things happen, and the screen allows O'Reilly to sneak one past Malcolm Subban. First period was one of O'Reilly's best at both ends of the ice, so there's your silver lining. Now, I don't mean to burst your bubble. I don't think Ryan O'Reilly was watching us all the way from Vegas. But that lead was short-lived for the Sabres. Seemed like Rasmus Ristolainen really cost his team on this one. Man. Yeah, you're going to see a turnover right here. I don't know where he's trying to pass it, but he looks to get it up the boards. That obviously doesn't work. Two on one. Both play the shot. That doesn't ever end well. And Vegas scores the easy tap-in goal that I think me and Aaron Minkowski could score at pickup hockey on the weekends. you <laughs> got to play that two-on-one better. That is not good. I don't blame that on the goalie, though. The turnover is really what cost them that goal. Well, we just saw the goal, and a bit of a surprise that Chad Johnson got his second start in a row. What are your thoughts on him so far now that he's surrendered two goals? Well, you know what? I really don't think that matters. The second goal was a deflection. I think the Sabres are just riding the hot hand. He played pretty well in their last game on Sunday. I don't think this is a controversy. I think we're going to see this a lot this year. They brought him in so he could play a lot of games right. as a backup. And you know what? He looked okay. So just see if he can continue to stay hot. All right. So again, the Sabres losing or right now trailing the Golden Knights yep. two to one in the second period. We also saw a penalty kill that really seemed like it took forever and it might end up having some in initial repercussions. Right. Yeah, Matt? this hurt me. Take a look at this video. Zembius Gergensen is about to block a shot. He's just oh. driving in pain. That puck's going really, really fast. He goes very slow to the bench. He has not returned into the second period, so perhaps something we're going to have to monitor for a little while with him. All right, thanks very much, Matt. Be sure to head to WKBW.com later tonight or tomorrow morning for his complete observations of the Sabres game this evening. Well, coming up just after the break, the Buffalo Bills added another piece to the offense tonight. His name is Deontay Thompson, and I'll share my thoughts on how he fits in up next. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News at 11.